Make no mistake, there was no accident in the timing of media savvy Ms. Markle's announcement that she was back in the lifestyle website business. A lukewarm welcome to Meg's overwhelmingly beige American Riviera orchard, a kind of soft focus through the looking gauze goop without Gwyneth and minus the style, where you can buy everything from jam to, and I'm just taking a wild guess here, cushion covers. Uh, you can even purchase Megan cutlery which brings a whole new meaning to the term knife crime. Whether this follow-up to the TIG, the site she set up while she was a jobbing actress in overrated cable drama Suits, uh, will bring in the big bucks remains to be seen. Are there really people out there who will buy stuff purely because it's endorsed by Megan? But here's what we do know, indisputably, beyond all doubt, the deafeningly loud launch of American Riviera Orchard trampled all over the Diana Legacy Awards, at which Harry and William were due to showcase their last remaining area of agreement, their shared devotion to the cherished memory of their beloved mother. Of course, as expected, the event at London Science Museum served to underline the Arctic nature of the brothers' bitter feud. The seething siblings won't even share the stage if one of them is only on Zoom. Uh, but the main cloud overshadowing the heartwarming proceedings, which honour selfless youngsters who help others, was the fact that Meghan's latest bid to rake in loads of cash was hogging all the headlines. Uh, was it a deliberate move to grab the limelight by a publicity-conscious woman who seems obsessed with chasing status, fame and fortune? You decide. Could Harry have had a word with his wife? Ask her to unleash her tacky website another day? Well, yeah. Except you get the feeling that the Duke of Sussex isn't the one who calls the shots in that relationship. The domineering Duchess does. In her new book, royal biographer Sally Bedell Smith has drawn parallels between the Harry Meghan dynamic and Edward VIII and his American Mrs. Wallace Simpson, who undoubtedly ruled the roost over her weak husband. The author says that Ms. Markle and Mrs. Simpson, both divorcees from the other side of the pond, one no longer with us, uh, share the same narcissistic and controlling qualities. She might think that, but as a famously impartial and unbiased journalist, I couldn't possibly comment. But I will say this. I agree. Uh, <laughs> now, uh, Renee, uh, what would you uh, think about all of that? So, I don't think I would ever be interested in buying the cushion covers. You're right, Kevin, but I think lots of people will, and I think the poor woman has to make some money somehow. When you say, when you say, what do you think, De Daisy? I'm, I'm not going to bring JJ into this. <laughs> All I'm doing is go, Megan and Harry are great. The reason I say that is because I'm young and they're young. <laughs> You're not. None of you are. Uh, but, <laughs> but seriously, uh, do you think she'll make a lot of money uh, from this? Because I'm not so sure. I think Renee's right. I think if she markets it right, we know she has a fan base. I mean, anybody who ever says anything online about you know, Meghan Markle does of Sussex knows she has a fan base because the him. pylon <laughs> the pylon is huge so there, there are people okay. who want to Fair emulate on. her who, who like her who will buy a bit of her so yeah okay, I think yeah. they will yeah and you think she'll make a lot of money I mean that that uh, little video we saw from uh, what's it American Riviera Orchard Apple yeah. Tree <laughs> <laughs> Beach <laughs> Sand Shade Lice Caribbean <laughs> whatever the hell it's called assumedly, uh, she, assumedly she just wanted a trendy acronym arc and so then fitted some words to it yeah i guess so apparently well, uh, to be fair to her the stretch of coast around santa barbara is called the american okay. riviera so she gets yeah. it from that uh, but it was so through it was as i said through the gauze looking glass wasn't it i mean it was so gauzy do you remember you, you lot are all probably too young but uh, those doris day films were all shot through a kind of muslim type yeah. gauze to make her look younger than she actually was so it was very very gauzy and very, very beige. Everything was beige. Yeah, look, it might not be to our taste as Brits, but we're a tiny market. She's not selling to us, really. She's looking to sell to the Americans, of which there are millions upon millions. And I think she's going to make 
millions upon millions yeah. from this easily. She won't be going as gaudy as Gwyneth Paltrow said in candles that smell like your vagina. I bet she, she does. No, no, she won't go down that route. I bet she e does. Even Megan wouldn't do no, that. No, she's, she's trying to be classy. <laughs> yeah. My, the favourite comment I received about the name American Riviera Orchard was from a Talk TV viewer who messaged me and said, <laughs> it sounds like these three words, you know, the geo satellite navigation system yeah, yeah. Where, where, where you say, you say, instead of giving a zip code. Foxtrot uh, Oscar and all that. Instead of giving a zip code to your address, you do the, yeah. you know, these three yeah. words. And I thought, yeah, Malcolm that's Rivera, a... Archer, are yeah. you there? <laughs> uh, over and out. Uh, but, but also, Kevin, I don't think she did steal the limelight. Oh, come on. This no, is... look, look, this is what happened. The timing? Two weeks, two weeks prior, who stole the limelight from King Charles and the Commonwealth? Well, she course... cannot stand to see anyone getting publicity without crashing in on the party. Well, of course, you're absolutely right. And I think she does wear the trousers. You're going to disagree with me, but I think the analogy with Wallace and Edward is the best one, really, because I think one of their butlers left when he walked into a room and Edward was painting her toenails. And he just well, said, I just couldn't do it. This was, you know, the King of England. Mm. It had to be over. And I think it's the same. Nah. And, you know, but, if it works for them, that's fine. Wouldn't but, work but for do, me. But don't you think these conversations about who wears the trousers are so dated <laughs> and so sexy? Yeah. I, 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 I did yeah. sort of stick in my throat a bit. I mean, know, why, I, it's a bit old-fashioned, yeah, but it, it is a anyone, phrase that sums up what I, I want know, to but, say. But why does anyone have to wear the trousers? I, I think they are genuinely a team. Now, you might not like what you know, what their ambition is as a team, but I don't think either of them wear the trousers. Mm. Yeah, I think they support each other fully. And to presume mm. that Meghan had this, made the decision, Harry's at the event, as you say, he knew about it, so does she. Yeah. Harry, may, um, Harry may have said to her, I don't care, post it, post it today. What's well, it matter? But, but he should have cared. Yeah, but he didn't. Because it <laughs> did overshadow the memory of his it mother. It did not. It no, did. it didn't. It no, did. it didn't. They are a team. William and Harry overshadowed that they together. They are a team, and I'll tell you which team they are. Stockport County, if they're lucky. <laughs> like, on a good day. They're no Man United, are they? <laughs> I would rather everyone in the royal family did what Harry and Meghan are doing and went out and made their what? own money. What? Oh, made, exactly. made their own money so we didn't have to pay for them. That is exactly what I think they should do. Know what? Do you know what? I've got some sympathy with that. I mean, yeah. the, the thing about paying for the royal family, uh, you're an expert, Daisy, perhaps you could address this very important issue. It's a, it's a step forward that the king says, I've got cancer. Then we go, what kind of cancer? Well, I'm not trying to do that. Uh, that's, that's not good enough. You know, if you're going to tell us a little bit, I'm afraid you have to tell us more. But I think, and and I think Kate's argument... problems are, are, are just that, that yeah. she said, I've got abdominal surgery, uh, you know, I'm recovering. Um, we, we, th th she created a, va a vacuum by not telling us enough. Mm. I understand where you're coming from, but I do think the argument of we pay, therefore we demand yeah. and we get whatever we demand yeah, does, doesn't it. really follow when it comes to medical matters. So let's just assume that she's had some horrible gynaecological issue or some you know, very serious bowel issue. Uh -huh. And let's... Let's remember, let's remember that not only that might be something she wants yeah. to keep private, yeah. but also she has three young children, I... that she might not have told those children yeah. what's going on. Why should they find out yeah. from the playground <laughs> well, what's going on to their own mum? Yeah, so would you want one of the kids right now, Mum, what's going on with this <laughs> picture? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you edit it? Uh, yeah, but exactly. uh, but I, 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 it's so awkward for me because I just feel, look, I pay for them, they've got to tell me more than they're telling no. me now. Yeah. That said, a young mum has got the right to privacy in terms of medical matters and so does the king. So this, but this system of will just tell you a little, a little bit, bit yeah. it doesn't work. Yes, yeah. but it wouldn't work for you if they told us nothing either, would it? Well, it kind of would if we didn't know at all. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, it is time now for a few bad ads. Look out, mouth. Watch out, hips. I'm bringing the world's fastest soft drink to my lips. Mellow yellow makes you feel so good, so fast. From your head down to your toes. Mellow yellow makes you feel so good, so fast. You just can't drink it so. Look out, mouth. Watch out first. This mellow yellow's as good as the first. Mellow yellow makes you feel so good, so fast. Look out, hips. Look out, wow. mouth. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Look out, hips. What, she's going to put a lot of weight on on her hips or something? I think she was going to shake those hips. I think that was the Maybe. implication. It's, what was that song? Uh, Donovan, wasn't it? Mellow Yellow. Oh, Mellow yeah, I don't think Yellow. it's a drink, though. Wasn't Quite it? rightly. Twice <laughs> nightly or something, yeah. yeah. Why are we talking about Donovan? <laughs> Where am uh, I? Anyway, <laughs> Donovan was good, wasn't he? Should we have a long discussion about <laughs> Donovan? <laughs> What's that other one? The Hurdy Gurdy Man. Here comes the Hurdy Gurdy Man. Know that one. Comes singing songs of love. Great song. Uh, you got some mean <laughs> tweets? <laughs> yes, let's move on quickly. Um, this week, Kevin, 
There's only two, and they're both about you. Oh, really? They forgot about me. Don't like me this, <laughs> yeah. Well, so what's new? <laughs> Kevin O'Sullivan, hashtag TV Kev. Nice. Thank you. That's Welcome. correct. Yeah. Is the most nasty, and I mean nasty. Yeah. He shouts down anyone who speaks facts, doesn't allow them an opportunity. That's to enough of that. <laughs> right, let's move on. <laughs> uh, carry on. He talks over them. Then he says, "I'm not listening to this. That's anti-Semitism. That's hatred." And he pulls the switch. Oh, well, facts. if it is at anti-Semitism and it's hatred, I have no qualms about <laughs> pulling the switch. What do you mean? What am I supposed to go? That's anti-Semitism. That's great. Kerry, <laughs> keep it going. Yeah, I love that. More of that, please. And this one from Jennifer. I saw Kevin O'Sullivan was on and immediately I switched off. <laughs> He's obsessed with Megan. She lives rent-free in his head. He's a pathetic little man who bullies a lovely little woman. He's like a little schoolboy in the school playground. It is showing in his face how screwed up and abhorrent he really is. Does that say who that's from? <laughs> yeah, it does, uh, yeah. Uh, whoever it's from, f*** <laughs> off. <laughs> that's, uh... They'll be buying cushion covers. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, everyone can f*** off now because we're going for an advert break. What just happened? He's mad as hell. It's Kevin O'Sullivan. Uh, welcome back uh, to uh, What Just Happened, the greatest programme ever made, uh, presented by me, Kevin O'Sullivan. And we've got a full house today. We've got Rennie Hunterkamp, JJ Anasiobi, and the great Daisy McAndrew. Uh, here are a few of my thoughts on Donald Trump and Nigel Farage. Should we try that one for size? Do it. Oof. On this side of the Atlantic, brainwashed by a fawning left-leaning media, a great many Brits seem to think that Donald Trump is the devil incarnate, an illiberal monster whose uncompromising, rousing rhetoric is all set to ruin the world, which begs the question, why didn't Donald ruin it the last time? If he's such a disaster, how come his presidency was by no means a failure and certainly not extreme? And for those of us who favor a close and friendly relationship between the two greatest countries on earth, Trump is the man. He actively likes the UK, loves the fact that his mother was a proud Scot, supports the royal family against the cruel and crass attacks by gruesome twosome Harry and Meghan, doesn't, unlike his ancient presidential rival, position himself as the last of the great anti-English Irishmen and actually wants a trade deal. So why does the all-important North London dinner party circuit loathe the orange man so much? Answer, because he's like an alien creature to insular guardian readers who are such prisoners of their own straight-jacketed groupthink they simply cannot understand anyone who doesn't share the same cosy little virtue signaling worldview, which is where Nigel Farage comes in. If Trump wins the election and consigns Sleepy Joe to the care home he belongs in, he's reported to be planning to employ his old British friend and admirer Farage as an envoy to the UK and the EU. America's main man in Europe, as it were. A guy who can articulate Trumpism and make it work in London and in Brussels. And who amongst us would not want to be a fly on the wall when Nigel heads to EU towers to put the unacceptably awful Ursula von der Leyen in her place? Uh, but nasty jokes aside, this is no laughing matter. Farage working for the Americans over here could be a serious solution to a fast approaching problem hurtling towards us like a freight train. Horror of horrors, like it or not, and I don't, the most boring man alive, Sir Keir Starmer, is going to be Britain's next prime minister. And Labour's elitist lawyer leader is a dyed-in-the-wool product of the fashionable thinking that emanates from North London's champagne socialist set. These are the sickeningly smug media, legal and political elites to whom the Donald is a frightening unknown creature from out to space. A sophisticated operator with the social skills of a natural diplomat, Farage acting as the go-between Starmer's middle-class snobs and the down-to-earth, unpretentious president makes perfect sense. There's even talk that if he makes it to the White House, Trump may make Nigel an American citizen and then appoint him ambassador to the UK. Why not? He could do a lot worse. That's right, isn't it, JJ? 
I mean, <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm but you do agree with me about Starmer. You don't like him, do you? Yeah, Starmer is boring, and I don't want him to be the next Prime Minister. But do we want a man who's never won an election in his life to be having so much power? Well, to be fair, lots and lots of ambassadors and envoys have never won elections. I mean, uh, seriously, Daisy, I mean, you know, obviously it's a fairly, it's a fairly garish scenario, but uh, Starmer and his gang, they, they literally do not speak Trump. They see Trump yeah. as this space alien. And I do think it would be pretty useful to have someone here who can act as a go-between between, between Trump's America yeah. and Starmer's I, Britain. Yeah, but I hate to Farage. say it, but I think Kevin has made a really quite compelling argument. No! I do! No! I do. So, can we do that again? <laughs> da, 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 da. Uh, Daisy said I made a good say, point. <laughs> I, I, I do think it's a compelling argument. And a lot of people for right or wrong, are frightened about a Trump mm. presidency, second presidency, because... Uh, uh, and again, yes, perhaps his bark was worse than his bite, mm. Trump's, mm -hmm. in the last presidency, but I think he has moved quite a long way since the last presidency. And people who say, well, you know, it was scary last time, but it wasn't all bad. It, I think a second round, ding, ding, yeah. of Donald Trump is a more alarming situation. So I, I, I can see there being a role with Farage. And it also makes perfect sense because at the moment in domestic UK politics, mm -hmm. people on the, the right within the Reform Party and those who are supporting them are crying out for Farage to come back and be the leader, take over from Richard Tice. And people are saying, well, why isn't he doing this? And those in the know are saying, because he fancies a role in America, not in he the does. UK. He seriously does. I just don't There's think... There's no doubt about it. I mean, the guy didn't even go to uh, the Reform UK Party yeah. conference. He went to he a um, Trump rally yeah. in America. I just, yeah. I just don't think he is the right person for the role. He might, he might be good from Trump's but side of things. Is? Well, someone who... All you need is a working-class person who can cut through the BS of Starmer, but also someone who has a bit of diplomacy. I don't think Farage has enough diplomacy. We watched him in the European Parliament mm. just poking people. Oh, but yeah, but they, I think he has yeah. a different role, though. Yeah. Uh, Rene, what, yeah. what do you think? I, I think the thing about Trump is, as, as proved by his last presidency, which was no, by no means a triumph, but it was not by no means a disaster either. And, of course, as soon as he got into office, he became much more moderate than he was on the campaign trail. And I'll guarantee you that's what will happen the next time. You know, his rhetoric right now is... Yeah, yeah, we're not going to give Ukraine any money. I bet he does. Yeah. Uh, he will be more moderate than you think. He will be. I mean, Nigel has won an election, by the way. What was that? he was voted into the European Parliament. Um, yeah. Sorry. Like, I think... like, 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 that matters for anything. Uh, Can't keep going. I, like saying... I, mean, sorry, I meant to say in the House of Commons, but... Okay. I feel yeah, like I saying any, anybody could do that. <laughs> <laughs> Alex Phillips. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> That's just a joke, Alex. Sorry. <laughs> well, I, think, I think what people are crying out for now is not diplomacy. They're sick of diplomacy. They want someone who's going to stand up like Trump and say... America is a laughing stock. We need to put it right. No one in this country would say that because they wouldn't say the truth. We are a laughing stock too around the world for everything we're doing. I think Trump has got it right. He speaks to the people, and Farage actually knows how to play the game. But it ain't about Trump. I think Trump. I think I agree with a lot of things that Trump says. But I'm saying that I don't think Farage is the right link between the US and the UK because what we don't need is another Trump character to be speaking to Star Wars people. We need someone who is moderate in between the two who can speak to both sides properly. Look, we're moderate. I don't think that is the you, 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 you're a big fan of Vladimir Putin, aren't you? You once told me that he's I your think... favourite world leader. <laughs> Not my favourite leader. This is true. Not this my is true. Leader. On air, I've got the recording. <laughs> I said, you said, you said he's a great weak. leader because he loves his <laughs> country. He loves his country. He he's, said that. He's strong and NATO is just um, a protection racket for the Americans to go across the world and put their army bases where they want. And if I was Putin, I would also do the same thing that he's doing. OK, let, let's, uh, let's... In a rare <laughs> interlude in this programme, let's talk seriously <laughs> about something. Uh, yeah, OK, you don't think Farage would be good for the role. I think he would be because he gets on so well with Trump, if you like. I said this the other day, you can imagine it. You can imagine Starmer and his mates in the cabinet going, well, what's he saying now? What does he mean? What does he mean? Yeah, in steps Farage say, perhaps I can translate. I speak Trump. <laughs> uh, so you don't think it, that he would be the right man. I think he might be, but someone needs to do this job, don't they, Daisy? Yeah, and actually, the more I think about it, the more I know I shouldn't find world geopolitics funny or I shouldn't take some sort of journalistic and cynical amusement, but the very idea of Keir Starmer having to sit down and take meetings with Farage. <laughs> that you know, is, Farage that knock, is funny. Knocking, knocking on the door going, you know, hey, Keir, it's me. I've, you know, I've come to tell you what's really going on across the pond. Yeah. 
it, from a journalist point of view, it would be oh, yeah. manner from I'd go to someone like John Kerry, Ted, uh, yeah, John oh. Kerry, Ted Kennedy. What's the old white guy called? Uh, <laughs> Bernie. Get Bernie. Oh, Bernie. Bernie Sanders. Bernie, Bernie. Uh, of course, of course. Bernie. Old old white is he guy. still alive? <laughs> Only you still can say it. that. <laughs> so you want boring. Three. You just want boring. No, no. I, I want. Do. I want someone who can who can translate Look. Trump's craziness into something that's a bit more palatable. So you know, for... from I love Putin, who's not boring. You can say that to yeah. I want boring in this job. Yes. Mad. But I, I think. But <laughs> I think if you want Bernie Sanders, you might as well ask Jeremy Corbyn to do yeah. the job. That'd be great. That'd be wonderful. Do you know what I like about? Trump. I mean, I've got reservations about lots of aspects of Trump's personality. But what I do like about him is he never gets sucked into this b that seems to dominate so much of the discourse in this country about, you know, we have to be very careful about our reputation on the world yeah. stage and all that crap mm -hmm. that no normal citizen ever thinks about. That's the problem with Sunak. He worries too much about globalist organisations, relationships with the ECHR, our reputation on the world stage, and doesn't care about what people actually want. Whereas uh, Donald Trump is the kind of guy who will have no truck with that mm. nonsense But you could about... argue that that just shows that Rishi Sunak's a grown-up and that Donald Trump really isn't. There is a particular, a peculiar genius about the guy. <laughs> but he's unusual. He's... But, Kevin, we can't believe a word you say, because because as the viewers know, you work for yeah, that's that. by that's not Everyone true. knows this. So you're Everyone gonna, knows. You're ruin my reputation. <laughs> uh, right, time for some bad ads. You better hurry up. We don't want to be late. <laughs> what the heck did you just do? Let your man out. Essence of man. That is fantastic. Is that real? Yeah. Yeah. You, you guys are probably too young to remember I'm Henry, Henry Cooper yeah. doing it. Splash it on. You <laughs> splash it on. And I remember it used to be when I was a kid, it was the, the, the all the kids were about like 10 years old. Bought it for their dad. We all had to get our mums to buy yeah. it for what was then about seven and six or something. And, seven, <laughs> and it kind of, kind of stank. Big thanks to Rene Hunderkamp <laughs> and to uh, Daisy McAndrew. <laughs> And the guy in the middle. No, thanks, JJ, as always. We'll be back same time, same place next week, right here for another edition of What Just Happened. Stay cool, everyone.